Big name, little price, but is it any good? Hello everybody, my name is Robert and this is Review Clue. So yes, today we're taking a look at this, the Samsung Galaxy A12. It's been a very, very long time since I owned a Samsung device. In fact, the last Samsung device I actually owned was the Galaxy S3 all the way back in the day. In particular, I've never owned a low-end Samsung device. This phone is £160. So yeah, this phone has some pretty low-end specs, but has that great camera and software that Samsung are known for. So my question is, is this a good buy for you? Or should you maybe save up 20, 30 pounds more and buy something like the Poco X3 or one of Xiaomi's offerings? That's what we're gonna find out today. We're gonna to go ahead and unbox this phone, take a first look around the OS, have a play with the camera, have a listen to those speakers, have a look at that screen, and make a decision as to whether I think this is a phone that you should buy. Anyway guys, if you want to see that full review, then get subscribed down below, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss that video. It'll be coming out on Saturday and I'm really excited to get it out to you guys. But let's get right on to today's video where we unbox and have a first look at the Samsung Galaxy A12 smartphone. Let's go. So here we are with the phone, and this phone was quite interesting to me. It has 4G support, it has a 6.5 inch display, it has a quad camera display array on the back. This one has four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage. It sports a 5,000 milliamp hour battery and so much more. I'll get into a little bit more of the specs as we go through, and in particular that camera array. But here's the box, it's pretty simple. We've got the A12 and a picture of it on the front. It's obviously in black. Along the side, all we have is the name there, and that's pretty much it. This is the simplest packaging I think you could ever ask for, uh, and I'm totally happy with that. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is just slide there and bring out the paperwork on top. So this will probably just be paperwork. There's nothing really interesting about this. Let's go ahead and get it out. Uh, yeah, we've got a quick start guide and the warranty card. It's a real shame that we don't get a case with this phone. Many of the phones within this price bracket from people like Xiaomi, Redmi and such give you at least a case. And this, this doesn't happen with Samsung or any of the bigger name brands. Which makes me question why the smaller name brands can't, can do it, but the big brands can't. Uh, let's move that out of the way. We've obviously got the phone itself. I'm just going to drop it off to the side for now because we're interested in looking at the other stuff that's in here as well. We've obviously got the SIM eject tool. And here we've got a USB-C charging cable. It's really nice to see USB-C here. We're not having to worry with micro USB everyone should be using USB-C, it should be the new standard. We also get a 15 watt power brick. It's fairly fast, I, I've seen faster, but in the box, I, I think it's pretty good. So let's go ahead and just slip that back on, pop it off to the side and have a look at the phone itself. So along the front, we see that 6.5 inch display. Uh, if I hold it the right way around as well, you can see the um, little teardrop or um, hourglass at the top here. And yeah, let's go ahead and just peel off the, the plastic and have a look at the phone itself. Uh, let's get this stuff to, let's get this started and powered on while we have a look around the phone. So there we go. Uh, along the side here, we've obviously got the volume rocker and the power button. This is also the fingerprint reader. I quite like having the fingerprint reader on the power button because you're having to press that power button to turn it on anyway. Along the top, we have a microphone, and that's pretty much it. Uh, along this side, we have the SIM card tray. This is the dual SIM model as well, which is nice to see. Along the bottom, we have a headphone jack, which great to see. I'm really glad that we're still doing headphone jacks in 2021. We have the uh, USB-C power cord and the speaker as well. This is just a single firing speaker. There's no dual speakers here. Uh, I'm taking a look at the back of the phone. I quite like how this looks. We've got this nice gradient between uh, a rubber or sort of a plastic feeling um, with a nice grip. I don't know if we can hear that there. It's got a nice grip. And this bit doesn't have any grip. It's just a nice little gradient between the two. Um, in terms of the cameras here, we've got the four cameras 
and it looks very much like a Pixel uh, or an iPhone having the little camera bump. It's not a massive bump as we can see here, but it's enough that when you put it down and start typing on it, you'll still get a slight wobble. But what we'll go ahead and do is just go through the setup. Uh, we're obviously going to be searching here for English United Kingdom. We are, of course, going to read all of the information here and accept everything. We're going to go ahead and connect to the Wi-Fi. It is worth noting that in some regions, this phone doesn't support 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi networks, only 2.4. But uh, the European edition we've got here does support both, so that's great to see. Um, service provider setup. It, hang on. Okay, so it's uh, doing a restart. But let's talk about those cameras on the back there and have a look at each of them individually. So we've got the 48 megapixel camera as the main shooter. We've got a five megapixel ultra wide, a two megapixel macro and a two megapixel depth. And we've also got the flash there as well. This is gonna only support up to 1080p video recording, but for 160 pounds, 1080p video recording is still really good. And along the front, we also have an eight megapixel camera as well. Let's go ahead and quickly talk about CPU and GPU here as well. The CPU here is the MediaTek Helios P35 processor. It's an octa-core processor, pretty standard at 2.35 gigahertz. And the GPU is a PowerVR GE8320. Now, in terms of the display, it is a PLS IPS display at 6.5 inches in size but the resolution is only 720 by 1600 pixels. This is not a full HD 1080p display, unfortunately, but I suppose you wouldn't really notice it. Um, being an IPS display, the viewing angles are not great, as we can see here. It, uh, it kind of just goes to black. So if you're not viewing this from directly on, you might get a little bit of um, uh, of color bleed and, uh, and light bleed, so. Let's go ahead and continue the setup. I'm not going to copy any data from anywhere else because I don't really need to. I haven't really got uh, any data on any other Android phones. We're obviously going to finish up the setup here. This is running Android 10 by default, which is always good. And we have the newest version of Samsung's OS. Let's go ahead and log in with my Google account. Okay, so that's just doing its thing. I'll come back to this when it's ready and it's sat up in its OS and we'll take a look around some of the apps that we get with it and have a play with that camera as well before we sign off and do a full review in a couple of days time. So actually it's asking now to set up that fingerprint reader. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll, we'll set up a pattern first. Uh, if anyone steals my phone, it's just an R for review clue. Well, we're gonna hit continue and just go through the same process again. R for review clue and scanning our fingerprint, which is going to pop it against the uh, our thumb against it there. And it goes ahead and does it. it. It's It seems quite quick. It's nicely placed as well. Uh, I prefer this placement over uh, others uh, under fingerprint sensors. I've always hated. Um, on the back, I do quite like it as well. But here it works too, considering you're having to press that power button to start the device up or to turn on the screen. Anyway, having the fingerprint sensor there makes sense. But uh, we're nearly done. It, it's taking a little, it's taking its jolly old time to, to read my fingerprint. I'm, I must admit it's, uh, there we go. Okay, and it's getting our phone ready. And then what we can do is we'll try out that fingerprint sensor to start off with and then have a look around the OS. Maybe watch a YouTube video or two, have a play with the camera and just find out what we get. I'm not going to sign in with a Samsung account. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and skip for now. And we're all done. So we're going to hit finish. And give it a second. I'm guessing it's doing something. It is. Very slow to start up there, but um, I suppose it's doing a lot in the background. It is ready. Cool. So let's go ahead and just um, turn off the device. Fingerprint on it. And that's not bad. Um, let's try that again. Oh, that was a slow one. Let's try that one more time. 
There we go, that's more like it. So that was quite quick. It's potentially not the fastest fingerprint sensor I've ever used, but for 160 pounds, it's not bad, I suppose. Um, now, my issue here is I'm looking at this screen from an angle. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at it from sort of that angle, and it is really hard to see that display. Th this display is not good at all um, for viewing angles. But I, I, I suppose you're paying for, you, know, you get what you pay for. Let's have a look at some of those installed apps, though. We've obviously got Spotify and Netflix, which is great to see. We have our clock, calendar, game launcher, uh, some Microsoft apps, so LinkedIn and Outlook and such. And is this all we get? Okay, no, we do have some others as well. Inside Google folder, we've obviously got all of the Google apps. The Play Store, and, oh, pulling up, we do get some more as well. Let's have a look at some of those pre-installed apps. There is a lot of bloatware. Samsung likes to put a lot of bloatware on their phones from Google and Microsoft and everyone else. Uh, I, I read somewhere that they've started installing TikTok by default on some of their phones. Uh, this isn't one of them, thankfully. But in, t in terms of bloat, it it's, it's not the worst I've seen. We've got Game Launcher, we've got uh, some kind of gallery. But yeah, I, I'd say that's a good level of bloat. These, these are mostly apps that I would use in a normal day-to-day -day basis. So... Let's go ahead and open up the camera because that's one of the main features of this, that 46 megapixel camera on the back. And we all know Samsung is really good at cameras. So let's just uh, prop the box up here, take a photo, and then we'll have a look. Okay, that was not particularly fast to snap that image there. But what we do get is, I'm just gonna allow it to share my location. What we do get is a really nice, sharp looking image. The image is, I can actually zoom in really close on that and it's it's really crisp and clear, you can see. Uh, obviously my lighting conditions are really good in here because I'm filming, but in general, I'd say that's pretty good. Obviously this bit's out of focus, but that's just the focal point of the camera. Um, let's go ahead and take a selfie and, and have a look at that front facing camera. But, in general, I'm pretty impressed by the quality of that back-facing camera there. So let's just um, rotate around to the light. Again, it's really not very fast at snapping that photo. It takes a little while. But there's a lovely picture of me there. Um, really good quality again. Uh, we can see my awful attempt at a beard. Um, but in general, I, I, I'm I actually really impressed by the picture quality here. I was expecting to be because, as I noted, it is a Samsung phone and Samsung have always been really good with their photos. So we get that video mode too. Let's, um, I mean, being set down to just 1080p isn't the best, but in terms of quality of the screen and the price point here, I wasn't expecting to see 4K. But in general, I, I think it's quite quick. It's, um... We'll watch that video back in a second. Let's just watch that back and have a look. Video quality seems to be pretty nice. Um, in fact, that gives us a good chance to try out that speaker as well. So let's blast that speaker all the way up to full volume. Green and the price point here, I wasn't expecting to see 4K. But in general, I, I think it's quite quick. It's um, We'll watch that video back in a second. Yeah, so I'd say colour reproduction is really good here. We've got a nice level of detail and clarity as well. Uh, so we've got a live focus, whatever that means. I don't really know what, what that does. Let's take a look. Um, okay, yeah, so it, it, um, it picks out uh, something in the scene, for example, the box here, and then adds a fake blur to the background, which might be good for taking photos of people. It's doing something to it there. Might be good for taking photos of people, but uh, we can also change the background effect as well, which is nice to see. Cool little feature there. So we can unblur and re-blur the background. Let's take a look at YouTube real quick, because I'm intrigued to see how um, the speaker and the screen, 
how the screen looks and how the speaker sounds for uh, more normal content rather than stuff that's been filmed on the phone. So you can see a couple of my other channels there, uh, Review Clue Shorts and More Clue. If you're interested, go subscribe to them. Uh, I'm, I'm always looking to uh, to expand my viewership on those channels as well. But let's go ahead to your channel and watch my latest video on the Samsung Galaxy Buds. Gonna skip the ad These there. are the Amazon Echo Buds, a collaborative project between Amazon and Bose to create earbuds that have active noise reduction, pass through, and she shall not be named, all in one little bud. So, are they any good? Well, let's find out. Hello, everybody. My name is Robert, and this is Review Clue. Okay, so um. That, that one, that was loud, but two, as noted, the screen's not terrible. Colour reproduction is really good, but really only if you're viewing this directly on. If you're looking at this from an angle at all, it doesn't look particularly great. Uh, and you've only got that one speaker as well on the bottom here. You've got this one. Um, there's none along the top. So you, you kind of, I think my left ear was missing out there. My, my left ear was missing out on a lot of the, the sound. And it's a real shame. So what's my verdict on this? Well, I think this is difficult because as I begin to use this phone over the next few days, which I'm going to do, I'll be able to give a better review. But straight off the bat, this phone is £160. If I were to spend £40 more, I could get something like the Poco X3, um, which will be my review of that will be up there or in the description down below. The Poco X3 is significantly faster, has better cameras, has faster software, has dual speakers, and in general is just a much better phone for not very much more. The A12 seems to fall into this kind of odd space for me where it is a high-end company trying to do low-end phones. And you're mainly paying for the Samsung name and the One UI here, I feel, and Potentially, I think you can get a better deal elsewhere. If you care about your brand names, this might be a good shout for you. But in general, it's probably not my cup of tea and I don't intend to use this as the daily driver. Whereas other phones in the past, like the Mi 10T Lite or the Poco X3, as I mentioned, are phones that I see and envision myself using. It's a real shame. But anyway, guys, if you want to see a full review of this, including some gameplay, some photo and camera reviews, then get subscribed because I'm going to be doing all of that on this phone. Yeah, so let's jump to me for the outro. So there we have it, guys. This has been my unboxing and a first look at the Samsung Galaxy A12 smartphone. Uh, potentially a really oddly placed smartphone in my mind. I feel like there's much better deals out there. But if you're looking for that really good photo and video quality, this might just be the phone for you. Anyway, guys, my name's been Robert. This has been Review Clue, and I will catch you in the next one. Adios.